Hello and welcome. This is Chameleon, and this is a video on Kamikaze and how to actually run an update yourself. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my builder VM is up to date. And I'm going to use the Wajig tool to do this. So, Wajig, get into Wajig shell. And uh, Wajig is a shell that allows you to perform quite a number of commands. In, in, a, in a shell sort of a manner. Uh, so I'm just going to stretch this window open. And this is a uh, uh, GNOME terminal, not the built-in uh, uh, LX terminal of LXDE. And the reason that it is GNOME terminal is because LXterm does not let you do this. So much like OSX, uh, contents of a terminal will resize. So what I want to do is I want daily upgrade, which will go and hit the repositories first, and then if it finds any packages to upgrade, it will prompt me. Now in this case, uh, I've already updated the uh, host virtual machine, so we're not going to get anything here, but I just wanted to go through the process so that it would be visible. Uh, this is especially important if uh, uh, you need to rebuild the kernel modules. Uh, if you have additional kernel modules, which I do for some additional network cards, uh, bypass network cards that we support. So uh, I'm just going to close this terminal now because we're pretty much done there. And I'm going to navigate over to System Tools and uh, Ubuntu Builder. Now I already have uh, a project in progress, but if you wanted to, you would say select a ISO from local disk, and then it would unpack it for you, and then you'd get here, and you can start your job. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open up Synaptic, which is the graphical package manager. And now th this is the packages that are actually inside of the virtual machine. Now in here, um, a friend of mine actually wants to use uh, uh, the, the frame buffer on the console. So we're missing a couple of tools to be able to do that, like FB set. And uh, FB set is a uh, frame buffer management program that lets you uh, change the virtual resolution of a frame buffer device, which can be pretty important. So I'm just going to install this package for him and apply. And one new package will be installed, FB set, okay. Do, 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 do. Let's watch the details for this, shall we? So it's unpacking FB set and it built. And everything is done. So that's that. Um, but here's the other thing Kamikaze needs an update. So I'm going to quit out of Synaptic and I'm going to open up the console. Now, with that same Wajig daily upgrade command, I'm going to run that here. Now, I could do it like this, but I'm not going to. First, I'm going to open up the Wadrid console because I happen to like being able to do things like showing package configurations. We should see that this is in state installed now. Good. Uh, or, you know, doing searches. Uh, so, let's see. Um, I guess that's not the greatest search, but, uh, oh. Yeah, see? And now if I wanted information on one of those, like, uh, you know, show Nginx extras. And we can see. We do have. Nginx extras, which actually gives us a bunch of extra neat stuff inside of our HTTP servers, uh, including Lua, um, which is quite useful. It's disabled by default, though, in, in my images. So, um, daily upgrade, which should show us that we have a couple kernel packages and some Zen updates because there was just a uh, Zen security upgrade. Uh, and yep, there we 
go. So there's the these end packages which I was expecting and the uh, Linux. Uh, yes, all of the extra Linux packages. So I'm going to say yes and install those. And you can see in some cases output is not uh, restretched. And that is because this is a Lex terminal. So uh, if you drag around a window, it will not look pretty. But uh, I have uh, terminal icons on my desktop that will open up uh, my terminal of choice. <coughs> And you can see that this is you know, kind of manual. You don't really get much in the way of references. You can pick a font, you know, tab panel, scroll back. Uh, although I do think it does have full screen. Let me see. F11. Yep, it does. So there's that, at least. And I might as well uh, use this time to give you a little bit of a tour around while it's building. Um, so, Ubuntu Builder lives in the System Tools uh, folder. Um, it can be used to open up ISO files, unpack the SquashFS, and change the packages inside. Um, Synaptic is the package manager that we were just using. There are a couple other useful tools around uh, Gparted is notably available on the disk, uh, so it's the disk usage analyzer, uh, which is quite useful. So, um, for example, we can see that I have quite a number of uh, um, uh, things inside of this virtual machine because I've done quite a number of builds uh, with this in the past. But if you had this running on a physical machine, for example, you could use this to, um, you know, search for large things on your own hard drive, and it would probably come up with things like, you know, the Windows swap file or things like that. Um, but if Windows isn't running uh, and you need to defragment your disk and the swap file is in the way, in theory you could, you know, o open this up from a USB stick, delete the, um, uh, what's that file name? this will do is because my virtual machine that's building this is running on the same kernel uh, 3.16.0.38 as uh, the virtual machine that is the ISO that's being built um, these kernels uh, these kernel modules will be built against the running kernel and if you don't have the same versions matching things get a little out of date but there's the two bypass drivers that we needed they're now up to date so, uh, I think we are done there. Uh, but just before I finish things up, there is another little caveat here. There can only be one kernel. And uh, it looks to be uh, that we need to remove all of the uh, older kernel bits. So I'll mark those for complete removal those out which will drop 283 megabytes because we have all the development headers and everything else <clears throat> and while that's turning that out do, 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 do. all right so now we have no more auto removable packages there is one last thing that I have to do, though. 
so I have to, um, hmm. okay, so there's two ways that I can do this. I can either open up the console inside of the ISO I'm editing, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. And what I'm going to do instead is gksudo um, pcmanfm, and which will get me a root file manager window. So from here, I'm going to go into the actual file system, which is unpacked here. So this, this is the ISO that's unpacked. And we are going to have ourselves a look inside of lib modules. And looky here, here's the old kernel. And here's the two extra kernel modules that I had to build. 33 kilobytes and 81 kilobytes. But now they're useless. So because I am root in this window, I can remove this and trim down that few hundred bytes. So the other thing that I want to check is to make sure uh, that inside here I have a git tree, which I want to make sure is updated. So we're going to go back inside the console and cd home git ls and there's the kamikaze deploy script which you'll know from the repository the one that you got kamikaze from so if you look in here now we want to pull down any changes and we're already up to date so that's that and now all we have to do is just build the iso and that's really simple all we have to do is just click this button and it will get to work doing everything it needs to build this ISO. When it's done, it will put it in the home Ubuntu Builder folder. So uh, let me open up my, uh, let's see, I don't think I need a root terminal for this, so I'll just open up the normal terminal, which of course you can get to from here as well, or you know, from several other places. But if I go into Ubuntu Builder, um, this, ISO file is the one that will get replaced. You can see my last build was on the 14th, um, and this build is uh, on the 20th. Now one thing to note, because this is a single threaded application, Ubuntu Builder, while it's doing something, uh, one of these things, it is going to not update the contents of its window, which can be kind of annoying. But it's harmless, and you shouldn't really worry too much about it. Uh, when this process finishes and the terminal closes, then it will refresh its window. But uh, I believe that's just an issue with the programming language that Ubuntu Builder uses. Uh, and surprisingly enough, it was written in the basic language. Yeah, the old 1980s basic. Not C, not Python, not Ruby, but basic. Well, an offshoot of basic uh, called Gambas. Um, and it just so happens, uh, I think I might be able to... Gambas, Gambas... Well, either way, here, I'll just uh, open up a root terminal, and, oh, you can see it already starting to go and make the, uh, the squash FS off in the background. And once that finishes, it will wrap that up into the ISO for you and spit you out a brand new ISO, just like this one. And I can actually just open up this ISO uh, with the archive manager. And be able to see inside of it. Here, here it is. <clears throat> so, if you actually look at the distribution of file sizes here, you can see that Casper is really disproportionate. And that's because this is the squash effects. And this, this is normal. All, almost all of the Ubuntu disks do it this way. Um, so, you generally have uh, your, your kernel. And you can see that this one is zero bytes, but that's because on the ISO it's actually linked to this file that saves some space, because they were the fi same file anyway. 
why not? And the uh, initial root uh, uh, initial root disk, initial root device, however you want to call an NRD. Um, so this starts up first, then loads in this, and this is basically a, a minimal uh, operating system uh, image on its own that will then go and, and has a couple scripts in it to go and look on USB devices and CD-ROMs to try and find itself. And if it does, it will loop mount its own ISO and uh, uh, just and and then double loop mount the squash FS inside of the ISO, and that's how, for example, uh, booting from a USB stick would work. Uh, and in my case, uh, since Kamikaze is uh, built for doing virtualization, um, the Zen hypervisor is also included on the ISO and uh, also ends up starting up first in most cases. So I believe if I go into ISO Linux, there is a, I think it's like menu dot, menu dot config, this might be it. Open that up with a text editor. Nope, that's not it. Uh, oh, STD main menu. Yeah, that's it. This guy right here. So, STD menu. Uh, where did I get that? There we go. STD menu. STD menu. Standard menu. Okay, there we go. Open. No, that's not what I wanted to open with. And that's not the file that I wanted anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, let's just show me files. DT menu, menu, graphics boot, RQ text. It's one of these. Uh, maybe it's this one? No, that's not it either. Uh, hold on, let me just go and look. GitHub.com slash million slash comment because you deploy. And in the resources, in the build scripts, I do believe. Ah, okay, so it's named text.config. Silly me. TXT up, ah, and there it is. So open with gedit. And here we go. Here, this is the menu that you will see when the ISO boots. And I'm kind of pointing this out so if you want to change any of these options yourself, like for example, giving Gamma more than one gigabyte of memory when uh, uh, when it starts up, um, that would probably be helpful. In fact, I'm not even sure why I have that set at one gig. It should probably be a bit more. Uh, I'll fix that later. But uh, generally, uh, if you're running in a virtual machine, you'd want to choose the third option. Just try without installing, because the first two options will actually try, uh, because it will assume it's running on real hardware, it will try to put everything into RAM while it's starting up. Uh, and in, then at that point, since it's intended to be started up from a USB key, you can actually pull out the USB key and it will continue running, running normally, because everything is all in RAM. Which is very, very handy. Anyway, this is still chugging away doing its thing, and I suppose we don't need that anymore. But, um, for example, let's just see some of the, uh, um, the packages that we uh, add into Kamikaze. So, one of, what we do is we, we end up purging out most of the desktop applications. So, Abbey Word is gone, Genomeric is gone. Almost all of the media player stuff is all gone. You, know, you can see like lib Blu-ray purged, uh, you know, lib DVD read, you know, all of this stuff. This this is two to three hundred megabytes worth of, uh, in my opinion, worthless crap that I don't need. Uh, now, if I wanted to play back video, 
I wouldn't be using Kamikaze. In fact, I'd be using something like uh, Ubuntu Studio or Mythbuntu or uh, choosing something maybe completely different than Ubuntu, like, um, uh, what's that? Uh, there's a, uh, uh, an ISO image that uh, you get XBMC, uh, not, it's not XBMC anymore, it's um, Kodi. And uh, let's see, Kodi. Um, so I honestly forget what the name of that. Uh, okay, let's try XBMC ISO. Okay, so there's Kodi.tv, and then there is a particular distribution, a minimal distribution with just XBMC on it, um, or Kodi, uh, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Because they're basically doing the same thing that I'm doing. Uh, Kodi ISO uh, Ubuntu, maybe? Uh, I had... Whatever it was, I had it stashed on a USB stick. And it was Ubuntu-based. Ubuntu XBMC Distro. Maybe that'll do it. Come on, duck, duck, go. Anyway, this is kind of running on time now. I think it's uh, almost half an hour now, 22 minutes. Um, so uh, this is uh, still chugging away, using up all of the CPU. And this is a multi-core uh, virtual machine, of course. So if I open up a uh, terminal here and uh, HTML, we can see that you know, four cores, all of them are, are getting banged out on the squash of this. But this is the part that takes most of the time. Essentially what's happening right here is very, very heavy duty compression is going on. Uh, it's using um, basically seven zip compression and it's really crushing everything down. I mean, really. I mean, we end up with a, what was that, a, a, a slightly less than 800 megabyte. Let's open that up again. Uh, da, 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 da. Casper 811. Okay, 773 megabyte squash of that file. Uh, and if we actually um, look inside of this file system folder, we can see that it is uh, <laughs> about three gigabytes. And all of that is getting packed, and I mean packed, into this little 700 megabyte file, which uh, is uh, decompressed on the fly. Uh, LZMA is actually really efficient to decompress, um, but it, the trade-off is the compression time for it because what's going on is it's essentially running through a list of hundreds of filters and basically it's you know it's, it's it's like a woman shopping you know she's she's in there trying on you know every piece of clothing she can get her hands on in that three and a half hours uh, and essentially what's going on is um, you know some sometimes you, you hit upon the smallest compressed block that you can and that's essentially what's going on here is it, it's going through and repeatedly recompressing each one of these blocks just trying to beat its own record like if you've ever watched the simpsons with one of the earlier episodes where skinner the principal gets trapped under a number of boxes and uh, the only way he is able to keep his sanity so to speak is by uh, uh, bouncing a nearby basketball and counting the number of times that he has bounced it until he's discovered. But by the time of the end of the episode, nobody discovers him, and it's you know, kind of one of those, uh, nobody knows how long he was under there, 
sort of a thing. But I digress, and this is almost done. Come on, finish those last couple of compressions. Compress, 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 compress. Chug, 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 chug. No, well, maybe that's not the best. Well, hey, okay, I guess that seems to have worked. And now it's creating the ISO. And we should get a nice little dialog box in a moment. After it will generate the MD5 sum and SHA1 sum. And there we go. Uh, this ISO has now updated. It's now 817.1 megabytes, and the um, these two files are now matching. So what I'm going to do is uh, I am going to open up uh, my access to my web server, and I'm just going to go and upload these. Do, do, do. One moment, because I'm doing this off screen, you're not going to be able to see me. Posi, uh, boot, ISOs, and there we go. Okay, so. Squash this without. Okay. I guess I would just have to squash that then. So, here's the old one, and it's associated sums, and if I, uh, I'll just, I guess I'll pick this one, and I'll just head on over to Ubuntu Builder. Now I have Samba installed, so this uh, just shows up as a normal, actually here, why don't I go uh, 10.0.1.0. 186 slash Ubuntu. Yes, I know. You're stupid with names. Ubuntu Builder. There we go. And there it is. So, yoink, yoink, yoink. And, oh, that's not what I want to do. Now, notice something is uh, slightly different here. Um, this is a symlink, if you notice that over here and does not actually have a size, but it will actually reflect the real size of uh, the, uh, the file. So I don't have to rename it. It's actually quite handy. I just take these three files. Uh, well, okay, I suppose I should probably grab these two and just do this real quick. Do, 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 do. Say failed, what? Oh, right, it's read only there. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, okay, so I have to change them after I upload them. Alright, no big deal. So, uh, I just do this. Er, wait. I'll do this first. Yes, yes. Overwrite those two. Edit. to upload this. So we've actually only gained about 200 kilobytes here. Wonderful. You were only, please. And there we go. Now everything will be uploaded. And the sums are already there. And uh, if you check the website, uh, you, know, you, you know that uh, as soon as this file finishes uploading, it's uh, available for everyone. Uh, now, the bad prop point is, uh, if you happen to download the file while I'm uploading a new copy, well, you know, there you go. But, as you can see, there's only roughly a five-minute window where that can actually happen. And for the most part, since I'm uploading at about two and a half megabytes a second, 
Um, chances are I'm going to be uploading the file faster than you're going to be downloading the file. So if you start it right about now, um, chances are I would be finished with the upload before you were finished with the download. And that's just because most people have, you know, less than a 20 megabit in the connection. But anyway, that's that. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed on uh, how a copy of uh, Common Cause gets updated. Um, enjoy and uh, have a wonderful evening for everyone who's going to bed. That sounds stupid, but oh well. Uh, yeah, good night.